Our Heavenly Father, we are so grateful and thankful to you that we can come before your throne of grace so that we will obtain mercy and find help such a time like this. We are grateful, Lord, that we have met in your house this evening to seek your face, to pray concerning our lives, concerning our family, and also concerning the nation of the pandemic that is actually affecting economic things of this nation, affecting Lord, our way of living, affecting our church services of coming together, affecting workforces and everything. It is a prayer of God that as we come to seek your face, may your Holy Spirit help us, may your Holy Spirit guide us, may the blood of Jesus also purchase for us all that we need in order, in order that we are to live. We want to thank you that each one of us will be touched, each one of us will be blessed tonight. Father, we are grateful that at the end, all of us will say it is good that we came to seek God's face. For you have assured us that if my people are called by my name, will humble themselves and then turn away from their sins. Lord, you will actually forgive us and heal us. That's why we are come on the basis of a great invitation. We come, we humble ourselves tonight to pray, Lord, to praise you and also to thank you that in all this, Lord, we are still alive because of you. We are praying, O oh God, that tonight let your name be glorified in our meeting to bring glory and honor unto you in the name of Jesus. We are praying. I hope by the grace of God, you are all doing well. Yes, we are in a very serious moments nowadays as a country and also as a church. There is fear and panic because of the coronavirus disease that is actually having an effect on the whole world. But I want to assure you this morning, as God's people, that there is hope that God has a great mercy for us to trust Him in such a time that God will help us. First of all, let me assure you that we need to observe all that the experts have put in place. That we should be washing our hands, we should not be contacting people who may have such a disease, or be shaking hands, which is our cultural way of greeting. However, we need to go a little beyond that. The Word of God tells us that the name of the Lord is a strong tower, and the righteous run to it, and they are saved. Anytime there is danger, people need to run for shelter. And as believers or Christians, the nail of the Lord is our strong tower that we must run to it. If you are not righteous, you cannot run to this tower. And if you want to become righteous so that you can run to this tower, then you must receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior and Lord. Then Jesus will make you righteous. Once you are righteous, then you can run for shelter in such time like this. In such a time like this, God is our refuge. In such a time like this, Jesus Christ is our refuge. I let to, let to remind you that in the Old Testament, God made room that any time there are troubles, people can run to a seat of refuge. But in these modern days, under the New Covenant, Jesus Christ is our refuge. And any time there's problem or challenge, we need by prayer go to Him and declare that God help us. That's number one. When we ask God to help us, He will help us. Two, we must acknowledge that the Bible says that all the ungodliness of men and all the unrighteousness of man is what has brought what we are facing today. And God, in His own mercy and His own wisdom, has provided the way out of this. That we need to acknowledge that we have sinned against God. We need to acknowledge that we have sinned against God because our God is the God of justice. And any time there's injustice all over the world that you and me can see, it brings troubles, it brings challenges, it brings death to us. And that's why we are encouraging ourselves that we, the righteous, must stand in the gap and plead the mercy of God, that God have mercy upon us. God have mercy on all the nations and have mercy upon Ghana and have mercy upon our families, have mercy upon us because it takes only the mercy of God it is true that our God is God of wrath, at the same time, is a God of mercy, is a God of justice. My encouragement to us today 
is that let us all go on our knees and pray and seek God in such a time like this. You know, sometimes place came to people in the Old Testament and God actually said, when we sin against him, he will send place and also pestilence unto us. However, if we acknowledge that we have sinned and we say, God, you told us that when we sin, this is what will happen. What we are seeing today is because of our own disobedience and sin. So forgive us. Then God will forgive us. Let us acknowledge that repentance precedes forgiveness. We need to repent of our attitude. We need to repent of our actions. We need to repent of the way we do things. And then ask God for help. We can't just say God help us without acknowledging that our own disobedience and actions is what our causes this. Brethren, I want to let you know that the Bible says in the last, last days, such things can happen because man wants to have his own way. And God is a holy God and a righteous God that if you go contrary to his world, the consequence is there. And the consequence is what you are seeing today because man has rejected God and we have taken to our own way. So we, the righteous people, who have received Jesus Christ as personal Savior and Lord, my plea, and God is able to turn such a situation like this to let His will be done all the world. And I'm saying that, you know, all over the world I've heard that in China, in North Korea, and other parts of the world, people are praying. What are they asking God for? To have mercy. And so you can say God is using this situation to let people come to his presence, come into his kingdom. So you and me can say that God is calling on us that we need to come closer to him. Spiritual Christian, don't panic. Don't panic at all. God panic has its own consequence. Fear has its own consequence. You are not supposed to react in such a time like this, but respond. And our response should be God have mercy. Two, our response should be on our prayer that God have mercy. Three, our response might be that we must see to it that our neighbors are educated and pray for and share the gospel with them. Because it's only the gospel of God who has the power to save. I only say better about the church members. God is with us. God will lead us. God will guide us. And the blood of Jesus will cover us and our families. Because the Bible says that the blood of Jesus has the power over anything that rests against God's people. Number two, the name of the Lord once again I say it's a strong tower. Let us all run by faith. Let us all run to God and He will cover us under His wings. And at the end, each one of us can say, Yes, we face a challenge, but God came in and we are saved. I pray that God will cover you with His wings and protect and deliver us from evil so that at the end you and me can see our God wins. May God continue to reign in our life now and forevermore. Amen. Father, we are so grateful that you have led us. We came to seek your face. We came to pray. We came to thank you. And Lord, now we are close. It is our prayer, God, that your hand will be upon all people in this nation, from the north to the south, from the east to the west. Let your hand be upon us. Lord, protect us from evil. Lord, deliver us as we go to our homes. Let your hand be upon all the men in Bethlehem Baptist Church. Let your hand be upon the women. Let your hand be upon the youth. Let your hand be upon the children. It is our prayer, God, that you protect us and guide us. Let your angels go ahead of us. Let your angels be behind us and protect us from evil. It is our prayer, God, that you will come after the four weeks. With a lot of miracles in our home, tell about your mercy, tell about your love, tell about your protection, tell about your provision, and tell about all that you have done for us. Now I say, go in peace. May the hand of God be upon you to guide you. May your hand be upon you to protect you. And may the hand of God be upon you to let victory be on your side. Go, triumph. Go, live. Go. And the power of God rests upon you in the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, the prayer of thanksgiving. And the people of God say, Amen.